This year we came back with that same soil mix, the, the, um, the biochar compost, the 30% um, pond muck, and then that real sandy subsoil, and we layered these beds up, and now we have sudex, buckwheat, and cowpeas growing on them. And this, when it gets cold enough, those will die. When they die, we'll then knock them over and plant our fall brassicas, our winter brassicas actually through that. And then next spring, we will probably lasagna bed it again to build it up even more because it's so wet in there and plant another summer cover crop, crop on it. So we're trying to build it that way. And also what we'll do is when it gets about four feet tall, we'll come through with the floor mower and mow it back. And that'll allow especially the um, sudex to go much deeper and pull up more minerals and open up down lower and increase drainage. That and compost tea applications are how we're trying to get that drainage. You know, we're trying to work with nature rather than come in with a big old subsoiler and try and rip it open. Okay. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're trying to do away with tilling yep. anywhere we can. Yep. And, um, you know, we're protecting what life is there. Yep. I mean, you, yeah. you, you chew up bacteria yeah. and fungi yeah. every yep. time you use a yeah. machine on it. So. And it's fast. Yep. You know, it comes up fast. And you can keep it flowering. You know, you yep. can keep it flowering all summer if you just mow it back every time it finishes flowering. So it's a real winner that way. We love it, but it's not the big biomass producer. You know, it's not the one we aim at. Okay, so I'm really delighted to have Janine come see the bed she helped make. It was some hard work, wasn't it, Janine? Yes, it was. Come see what we've got here now. Woo! Oh, I've got to get pictures because I got the pictures while we were all doing right, yeah. it. Right, yeah. Well, the great thing, too, is I don't know if you can use it, but we have a film of the bed being made. So you can now go online, look at it being made, and then see what, we have, what we're getting from it, you know? Um, and we have a lot of tomatoes in this greenhouse. I can't say it's a scientific test, because these went in about a week later than some of the other ones, and the older tomatoes are, the more readily they get diseased. But still, I think it's impressive if you look at how diseased the other tomatoes are and how vigorous this one is. And I, I'm pretty convinced it's got to do with the incredible diversity of foods that are in that soil, because we layered pond muck, good compost, composted manure with leaves, straw, and huge amounts of plant waste, you know, basically weedy plants. And indeed, um, if you walk along here, I thought about pulling out the Johnson grass that was coming up. I thought best to leave it in because the truth is some of the weed waste you put in was Johnson grass and that's what happens, you know. The good news is it's pretty darn easy to pull out of a bed that's been lasagna bedded, you know, so it still works. Incredible production here with quality of tomatoes is spectacular. We'll be having some of those for lunch. Um, even the Cherokee purples and the Prudence purples are still going strong, not coming down, to, not, not getting hit hard by disease. Um, really see that this kind of not tilling, building up is the future. And a caveat, I think we have to pay more attention to make sure we have enough minerals in there. If you're growing on so much organic matter, you might have mineral poor soil and then have mineral poor vegetables. So that's something I'd like to work with you, Janine, on. Do the testing, see what minerals we need, need to add into that. I'm not going to stop adding organic matter on top but I realized we've got to come back and put the minerals in. And so that's a key piece to that. You can see we, this soil has been being treated without being turned for a long time. You can see the vigor in the peppers. We're getting very large yields in peppers, very large yields from everything. You can see that we're always, you know, we just, we had cucumbers on here two weeks ago. As soon as they come off, the cover crop goes on, you know. What goes in there next will be planted on top of dying cover, through the dying cover crop. And then as that gets enough size, there'll be a cover crop coming underneath it. You know, we're just trying to always, you know, as soon as we can get the cover, get the cover crop back in. You know, that's really important, especially in the mountains where the acreage is small. If we're going to do that kind of soil building and still be able to get the money that's needed for farmers to sustain themselves, we have to cover crop dynamically, you know, and just cheat it in wherever we can. This kind of fabric will come up, cover crop will go down. Um, We've been harvesting this pepper quite some time. and. And this row in particular, I mean, it needs a third string, but we've got really nice fruit set up high. I mean, to see medium, large, extra large, three, four weeks after you've been picking is always pleasing. I mean, in my opinion, it's very nice looking. And we've also had better results keeping our late blight off of our, uh, off of our tomatoes. Maybe not our heirlooms, but uh, it's kind of at bay, so to speak.
Um, the last thing I'd like to show you here, I hope we can find it quickly. We use Pediobius Fovulatus for bean beetle control and, and squash beetle control. We got it on a little late this year, but it looks like our beans are going to get a second wind anyways. Marshall, can you look and see if you see a, a parasitized larva? Pediobius Fovulatus is a wasp, a very tiny wasp that comes from India. We get it from um, the New Jersey Department of Agriculture. Nope, that wasn't it. Um, and what it does is it lays its eggs in the, um, in the bean beetle larva. Here we go. Here we go. I got it, Marshall. Okay, I'm, I'm looking. Okay, so that's the larva. It's pupating. That's a larva that never gets to pupate because it's been, well, I like to say, Sigourney Weaver. You know, the alien is in it. And instead, that larva there that's brown and attached to the leaf will be in probably less than a week. Um, will open up and out will fly six to 15 tiny little wasp, Pediolius fovulatus, which will fly around then and give control. And they range up to 10 miles. One of my dreams, now that we have a little bit of ground bottom heat in our new greenhouse, is to have overwintering beans or squash and we can actually grow that predator here and not have to get it from the New Jersey Department of Agriculture. But I want to sing the praises of the New Jersey Department of Agriculture. They've done a spectacular job of supplying growers with Pediobius fovulatus now for at least, going on 20 years, I've been getting it from them. Dr. Tom, Tom Dooley up there just really is acing it. It's so simple, you call them up, you order it, they bill you at the end of the year. I mean, that's, that's what I want to see our government doing, you know. That's the kind of work we need, and, and it, is, it is just wonderful to have that advantage. And so someday I'm hoping we'll be distributing these to our neighbors, because the cost really is the shipping. That's the major cost. It's the shipping. But we're, we're yeah. saying to people, you know, if you, if you could imagine, um, you know, a bed of clover. Mm -hmm. So it's fixing nitrogen. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's yep. a weed barrier. Yep. And you put your tomatoes right through it. So yeah. at the Rodale Institute, we still do till certain areas that are under, you know, heavy weed pressure. So when we do till, when we have to, uh, what we found is uh, coming in with compost tea three days in a row. Uh, a good high fungal count, compost tea, uh, we see change in three days. That soil comes back very, very quickly. So what he's doing there too is he's capturing all, when you do that tilling, you're incorporating lots of oxygen and lots of finely chopped up nutrients. And normally that would just get eaten up and gas off and be gone. But with the tea, he's raising the life to a level like all that potential is held right there in the soil and begins to repair right away. Yeah, and uh, it, uh, again, it happens quickly three days. We were actually up to five days at one point and then we, and then we started to back off to four and we found that three days is, is, the, is the ticket.